Welcome back to the Ultimate Mixdown. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own custom loops that you could take anywhere, load up into any VST and your DAW of choice, and get up and running quickly. I'm going to show you two ways how to do this. The first one is by drawing in the notes manually, and then the second way is using an external MIDI device like a keyboard or a controller. So without further ado, let's get right into it. As always, the first thing you need is a new track. So we're just gonna double click there in the track control panel, name our track, and then we're gonna go in and select our sampler. You're gonna need a sampler for this, or you're gonna need some type of VST that plays the sounds that you're trying to create the MIDI loop with. So in this case, we're gonna create some drum loops. And if you don't have a drum VST that has samples with it, you'll need something like Citala, which is a free sampler that you can go and get. And I'll put a link in the description below and you can load your own samples into it, or you can use the stock samples that come with it. For the case of this video, I'll just use the stock samples. Okay, and this is important because you're gonna draw in the notes and they're gonna be mapped to the drums in the sampler, or they're gonna be mapped to the drums in the VST that you're working with. Now, once you have those drums loaded up, then you can go ahead and select a four or eight bar loop. Okay, and four bars as in you heard four clicks when I press play, so I have a four bar loop here or I could make that an eight bar loop. And then you're just gonna wanna set your grid accordingly for the BPM or the tempo of the song. Your MIDI item will export based off of that tempo, but you can always adjust the tempo before, during, and after because it's MIDI. So it's not something that's set in stone by just setting it here and now. Now you can go ahead and create the new MIDI item by going to insert new MIDI item or Alt Shift Command on a Mac. All right, and we have the MIDI item here that we can work with. Double click to go into the MIDI editor. Now we're gonna create a very basic beat just to get the idea across. I like to set my grid to eighth notes to start. There are some things that I use 16th and 32nd notes, but eighth notes is a great place because kicks and snares oftentimes are typically on quarter notes or even half notes. And then hi-hats are typically eighth notes unless you're doing some kind of hi-hat roll. So we'll be able to encompass at least three of the most basic parts of a drum progression in the eighth note grid. Now in the MIDI editor, I've got this snap to grid on. This is gonna help me because everything that I create, every note that I create in the MIDI editor is gonna attach itself to the grid and be exactly on beat. Now to create a note, you click and drag for that note and I have kicks right here. So I'm gonna start creating some kick drums. I'm gonna put a kick drum pattern on every downbeat. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four. So I'm just gonna head and put that on one, two, three, four. Now to copy a note, you can hold command and click and drag, and that'll copy a note over. If you wanna copy all the notes within a measure or within a, a four bar progression, then you can right click on the kick drum, and that highlights all the notes here. And you can either command, click and drag those notes to copy all of them, or you can press command D, and that will copy them over. So now we have the kick notes on the downbeat for our eight bar progression. Okay, so if you counted that, we have eight kick drums on eight downbeats. Now I wanna put the snare on every other beat, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw those in here. Okay, so now we have the kick and the snare. Now oftentimes you hear something like a closed hi-hat, and this is typically on the eighth notes, so just constantly ticking as the beat progression is going. So I can put that in right now. Just start drawing some of these in. Now select them all. Right, you can just drag, marquee select. That's right click and highlighting the notes that you wanna select. And then command, click and drag. And now I have that progression extending the full eight bars. Now let's add some variation to it. So this is very typical to have a kick, a snare, and a hi-hat, or the equivalent thereof in your progressions. We can put a cymbal maybe on at the end here. So let's just hear that from here. Okay, and then it loops over again because I have it in loop mode. You can toggle that with the R key on your keyboard. Now I also wanna add hand claps on the second and fourth snares. So I'm just gonna click the hand clap so I can see it in the grid, and then I'm gonna add it on the second and fourth snare. Now 
Now the last thing that I wanna do is put a little variation into the velocity of the hi-hat. Kicks and snares are often hit really hard. You're not really gonna to need to change the velocity too much, but for the hi-hats, I'm gonna change the velocity up. I can, again, select all of them by right-clicking the note or the key in the piano, and then I could click and drag all of those up and down, but that's gonna change all the velocities to be the same value. So now they're all quiet. Okay, but another thing that I can do is while I have those highlighted, is I can click and drag in here and create kind of a wave of the velocity. So sometimes the hi-hat is being hit louder or harder, I should say, and sometimes it's being hit softer. Now you don't wanna to have too much variation, but you can try to kind of stay in the realm of other notes and just kind of moving up and down across the velocity down below here. And that will bring in a little bit more of a realistic feel to those hi-hats. Okay, and now we have a drum loop. And this would be a great point where you could export this loop, save it into whatever MIDI pack folder that you have that you work with, and then you can bring this in anytime you start a new production. Now with your loop, you can copy it just by clicking and then Command D. Okay, so that copies the media item, in this case, our MIDI loop. And you can do that over and over again. You can select all of these and then duplicate all of those at once. And you can create an entire song arrangement by duplicating and then tweaking the drums as necessary in different parts of the loop to make it sound more like a full production instead of just copy paste. So we're actually gonna do that right here. We're gonna have the four bar, prog uh, the eight bar progression that we already created, and then we're gonna switch it up a little bit in the second eight bars just to give it a little variation. So we're gonna keep the kick and the snare the same as we had before. We might add maybe a few more cymbals. So the cymbals now could be on uh, the fourth beat for each of our eight bars. And then the claps could be on the second snare in each of the four bar loops. You know, just, just putting some variation in there and make it a little more interesting. We got an open hi-hat, so maybe we'll do the open hi-hat instead of the closed. All right, I'll click and drag all those up. And then maybe we don't want to do it on every single beat. Maybe we just want to do it on every other. So you've got the kick hitting on the downbeat and the hi-hat on the offbeat. And then the snare matches in with the kick on every other downbeat. Okay, so let's take a listen. Again, a variation of the beat that we had earlier in this loop, sounding similar, right? It's at a similar tempo. The kick and snare are still there in place, but we've changed up a few things. And you can press Shift M, and that essentially merges or glues, in Reaper's terms, the two MIDI loops together into one progression. So we have this right here, and this is a great loop to start with, and you can modify as necessary, and then you can continue to export and save your MIDI loops, which I'll show you how to do in a little bit. Now, another way to do this, we're gonna mute this, is to actually record the keys on the MIDI device. So make sure you have your MIDI device plugged in, whether it's a keyboard or controller or uh, MPC pad, something like that. Make sure it's plugged in and turned on. You can go to your settings and just double check under MIDI devices that you have the inputs selected and enabled. And if you need to, you can click reset all MIDI devices if it's not showing up. So then once you have that, we're gonna do a new track and my input is gonna be my MIDI controller. In this case, I'm gonna use Easy Drummer just because I'm more used to Easy Drummer using the keyboard controller. And this is not a free software, but it's one that I love to work with. Okay, just make sure I'm on the right keys with my MIDI controller in front of me. Let me pull up the virtual MIDI controller so you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, so that's my kick, that's my snare. Here's my closed hi-hats, right? Might not be experienced enough with a MIDI controller to play all the drums in a progression, especially if it's complex progression all at once. So there's this cool feature about recording overdub on your MIDI tracks so that you don't need to play all the drums all at once. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record the kick and the snare for an eight bar progression. Okay, so let's start that. And the best thing is you don't have to play it perfectly. You can quantize it. Click the item and click Q and then select the, the grid to quantize to. I would quantize typically to eighth notes since it's not working in the arrange view for some reason. I'll just double click Command A or Control A on a PC to select all of your notes and hit Q. 
And then you can do use grid if your grid is set appropriately. Okay, so you don't really have to change any of the default settings here. So let's take a listen. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. Now the recording overdub. So you're gonna click record MIDI, MIDI overdub. What this does is instead of you recording over your previous MIDI recordings and basically wiping out what you have, not essentially because it creates a new take, but recording the overdub will actually record the new items that you're playing on top of the existing items. So now when I click record and I start playing in my hi-hats, it'll record those on top of the kick and snare. Okay, and again, not played perfectly, so I'll select everything and hit Q again. While we're in here, I'm actually gonna copy these over here and just have them for the entire progression. Okay, so the snares are kind of weak, so I'm gonna right click to select all the snares, and then I'm gonna drag their velocities up. Okay, so they're gonna be basically at max velocity. Same with the kicks. The kicks are not at full velocity, so I'm just gonna click and drag those up. And if you can't see this window, you can drag this window up as well. All right, you could zoom in so that you could see it a little better. And I'll just add some tom roll. Yeah, I'll do that right after the second snare. So let's just record. Okay, and you can record right here in the MIDI editor. So I press Command R on a Mac. It's probably Control R on a PC. Now here's the thing. So our grid is set to eighth notes, but these are more closely related to 32nd notes. So I'm gonna change my grid just to see what we're working with. And again, selecting the notes you wanna quantize and hit Q and click OK. So now I have the roll here, all right, and it's quantized, so let's take a listen. Okay, now if that isn't exactly where you were expecting it, you can always drag these notes around, right? I could put a little, I could do this, a little separation between the toms. Right? Almost a syncopated feel. You can also draw in notes, so you really don't have to play every note. Like if you know you want a basic four to the floor kick pattern, you could just draw those kicks in right away and then you can focus on your keyboard on the additional notes that you're trying to play. Now once you have your loops, you wanna separate them, you wanna split them. Okay, that's the S key on the keyboard or drag them so that the loop is the exact length that you wanna have. In this case, our eight bar loop. When it goes to exporting, it'll be very useful if you drag those loops to the beginning of the track. You don't have to do that, but it'll be useful to do that because either you have to drag them to the beginning of the track or you have to select the time selection for that item. And I'll show you why in just a sec. When you have your loop and you're ready to export it, uh, I've read that you can use keyboard shortcut, control, alt, and then click and drag this to a folder on your PC, and it will pull the MIDI item directly into that folder. I've tried a number of combinations, can't get it to work with Mac, so we're just gonna go the old fashioned route. To export, you go to File, Export Project MIDI. Okay, and you have a few options. If you're trying to export the MIDI for your entire project, then sure, go ahead and click Entire Project. But if you wanna do it for just a specific section, so this is what I was talking about earlier. When you have this at the very beginning of your timeline, then you can use entire project because it, when you export it, it's only gonna export these eight bars. But if you go over here and you do entire project, it's gonna export all of this, all right? All this dead space in the beginning. But if you don't wanna actually change your loop, maybe you've created a production where the loop is in the place that it needs to be for that song and you don't wanna mess around, then just select the time right, just selecting the timeline, click and drag for the eight bars that you wanna export. Then you can go to File, Export Project MIDI, all right, and instead of ex entire project, time selection only, and then you have the option of selected tracks only, so if you had multiple tracks, you could select multiple tracks if you want multiple tracks exported with the MIDI. Uh, in this case, we'll just do the selected item. It doesn't matter in this case because we only have one track, but we'll do selected items because we just want this one item. Then you go ahead and select where on your hard drive you wanna store those. So I created a MIDI pack folder on my desktop. I'll click save. All right, and I'm not gonna to touch any of the other defaults. And just click okay. And then you can click show in Explorer and you can see the MIDI loop file that we created here. All right, nothing's gonna play, it's not audio. But now what we can do is if we create a new session, all right, a blank canvas, if we wanna start with that loop 
either to give us some creativity, some little spark of creativity, or to start the project. Double click, load up your sampler of choice. All right, I'll just open Easy Drummer. And this is very easy. You can go through the Media Explorer, so Command-I on a Mac and look for that loop, or you can just go ahead to the folder where you stored it on the operating system itself and click and drag that in. Okay, so you can just click OK. If I went and let's say we changed the tempo to 120 and we pulled in that same MIDI file. All right, and we say ignore tempo suggested by media. It's still gonna pull it in, mapping to our tempo because this is MIDI. Okay, so you don't have to worry about the tempo. You can ignore the tempo pulling in these MIDI loops because the MIDI loop will adjust to the tempo. That's one of the flexible benefits of MIDI. And you can actually use this across different VSTs too. So you, the only thing you have to be wary of is making sure that the samples are mapped accordingly. So I know, for example, Citala doesn't map them to the exact same keys as Easy Drummer does. So if I were to bring this down here, we can take a listen and it's not gonna play the exact same drums that I'm expecting. The solution here is to either transpose these notes, right? So this mapped our snare to the hi-hat. So I'll just right click, click and drag that, right? And now the snare is working fine, right? But we're playing a mid tom instead of our hi-hats. So we'll right click the toms, drag it down to the closed hi-hat. And then our toms need to get adjusted as well. Now, another way to do it with a sampler is you're most likely gonna replace these samples anyway. So you can just pull in your samples to map that of your MIDI item. I'm always for the former. I always want to map my MIDI item or my MIDI loop to the software that I'm using, especially if I use VSTs that already have the drum sounds that I want versus a sampler. And then once you map it to that, you could even export this as MIDI loop one, two, three, four Citala. And then that way you know that it's already mapped to Citala. Mapping the notes is a whole different topic for another time, but I just want to make sure you're wary of that. So I hope this really helped you out. If it did, hit the like button. Be sure to share it with your friends. Always look in the description below because we're always coming out with new freebies for music production, songwriting, things of that nature. Thanks again for joining the Ultimate Mixdown. I'll see you in the next video.